Hi there. In today's session, I am going to answer three frequently asked questions. The first one is, can we use citrus fruits to supplement vitamin C in aquaculture? And the second one is on PPM calculation. I'm going to make it very easy. Uh, and the third one is EHP spore inactivation. So before going to the presentation, a brief introduction about me. My name is Ravi Kumar Amirineni. I'm an aquatic animal health specialist, founder of Ravi Aqua Academy and partner in Alpha Biologicals. Coming to vitamin C, yes, you can use citrus fruits, but there is no advantage. Why? Each 100 grams of citrus fruits contains only 70 milligrams of vitamin C. So if you take 100 grams of citrus fruits, you get only 70 milligrams. On the other hand, if you take one gram of stable vitamin C, it contains 350 milligrams, almost seven times. Suppose if you take 700 gram citrus fruits, you can replace it with one gram of vitamin C. So that is why there is no advantage by using citrus fruits. It may not be economically viable. Coming to the PPM calculation, the weight of one liter water is equal to one kg. Please keep it in mind. The weight of one liter water is equal to one kg. And if you expand PPM, PPM means parts per million. One PPM means one part in one million. For example, if you take water, one million, the R 10 lakh liter of water, if you add one kg of chemical or one liter of chemical, it is one PPM, one part in one million parts. Here, one hectare meter water depth contains 10 million liter. So if you want to apply a chemical of at, at the rate of one PPM, you have to add 10 kg. Once again, I'm repeating, one, li one million liters of water, you have to apply one kg. Here, one hectare meter contains 10 million liters of water, so you have to apply 10 kg. On the other hand, if you come to one acre, one acre, one meter water depth contain four million liters of water. So we have to apply four kg in order to get one ppm or one part per million. Here it is four million liters of water. That is why we are applying four kgs in order to get one ppm. So still, if you get confused, I'm going to share a spreadsheet at the end of this presentation so that directly you can enter the pond water area, pond area and water depth so that it automatically calculates the dosage. Then coming to the most important topic, EHP spore inactivation. Okay, so in order to inactivate EHP spores, you have to apply, if you select burnt lime, you have to apply around six tons of burnt lime per hectare of water spread area per hectare of uh, one hectare pond, you have to apply six tons of burnt lime. Then if you add water, if you moisten it, the pH goes to 12. And after that, due to reaction with carbon dioxide, it becomes calcium carbonate and the pH comes down. Initially, when you add water, when you uh, apply calcium carbonate and you add water, the pH goes up. After that, again, pH go, comes down, right? And one disadvantage is most of the shrimp farmers, especially in Andhra Pradesh, they are using inland bore water where the calcium levels are high and magnesium levels are low. Now, low. I mean, there is no proper calcium magnesium ratio. In addition to that, you are adding calcium in, in the form of burnt lime. So there is a, a chance of your calcium level going up. So that may lead to some malting problems. And coming to bleaching powder. So as per the data available, you have to apply 40 ppm of 65% bleaching powder. And another chemical is potassium permanganate. You have to apply 15 ppm of potassium permanganate to inactivate EHP spores. And one more option is sodium hydroxide 
at the concentration of 2.5 to 3 percent it completely inactivates EHP spores and after that as a second treatment we have to apply acidified chlorine at the chlorine at the concentration of 200 ppm and pH of the solution should be around 4 so that you can completely inactivate the EHP spores. All the four med, uh, mentioned above like bleaching powder, potassium permanganate and sodium hydroxide, all the three they are, uh, in the laboratory they are able to completely inactivate the EHP spores. But coming to the formalin, formalin is effective uh, only at 95.33%. It is not 100% effective at the concentration of 200 ppm. So 200 ppm is too much of concentration. It's very difficult to apply uh, that much concentration in the form. And another option is freezing. Freezing, especially in the hatchery, we use polychaetes. Uh, live polychaetes are the major source of EHP contamination in the hatchery. So if you freeze the polychaetes at minus 20 degrees centigrade, it will inactivate the EHP spores. One more chemical is 20% ethanol. Normally we use it in practical, uh, we use it in the laboratory to disinfect the surfaces, especially pipettes, surfaces and all. We use ethanol to inactivate the EHP spores. So all these chemicals like bleaching powder, PP, sodium hydroxide, you can select one or you can select the combination of one or two. Normally I use bleaching powder first, then potassium permanganate. Since the chemical dosage is very high, what I do is I reduce the water level to half feet. So reducing water level half feet so that you can reduce the cost of your chemical application. So this is the information what I have on uh, uh, EHP inactivation and there is a scientific support for all the chemicals that I have mentioned here. And if you have any doubts, you can uh, send me, uh, you, uh, you can contact me on my WhatsApp and uh, and now I'm going to show you uh, the PPM calculator. So this is the spreadsheet I have developed uh, for uh, alpha farmers. So now you can enter your water spread area. For example, suppose your pond is two acres and you want to treat the water with uh, potassium permanganate, fill half feet water. Here enter half feet. And then potassium permanganate, you have to apply at 15 ppm. So enter 15 ppm. So it will automatically calculate. So suppose you, your pond is two acres and water depth is 0.5 feet. And you want to apply potassium permanganate at 15 ppm concentration, you have to apply 18 kg. So this is how it is. And suppose if you want to apply 65% uh, bleaching, so enter just 40, you have to apply 48 kg, that is around almost 2 kg. But most of the cases we apply little extra because there will be organic load in the water and the pond bottom. Uh, there will be demand for chlorine and there will be demand for potassium permanganate. So slightly we add one bag extra, 48 kg means almost two bags and we add one more bag extra, that is mean that so that completely inactivates all, uh, most of the HB spores uh, on the pond or soil. Thank you very much. So this is the information I have. If you like it, you can share it with your friends. Uh, thank you once again.